Exactly. Farmers often get a bad yes, rap from Yes, farmers do. You're quite right. Farmers often get a bad rap, as Rolf just said. Many wildlife habitats. From, uh, from environmentalists for uh, destroying many wildlife habitats. And those huge, headless, uh, treeless mega fields they farm do look like unpromising places for wildlife. But as Mike Dilger found in Hampshire, you'd be surprised what's out there if you look carefully enough. At first glance, these huge open fields seem the exact opposite of a rural farming idyll. There's no patchwork effect, hardly any hedgerows, and no clusters of woodland. But look a little bit closer, and you'll find it's teeming with wildlife. Skylarks, grey partridges, and brown hares, all endangered but thriving here because of the way the land is managed for farming. So what's making all the difference? Malcolm Brockless of the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust works with farmers in Royston, Hertfordshire. The Trust researches and develops wildlife-friendly farming practices, many of which are funded by the government. It's very interesting when you come down on the ground because you see what looks originally like a monoculture is actually an incredible array of habitats. There's a crop there, there's grassland here, they've got this lovely area of teasels over here. Why have you got all these different strips? Mm. Well, this is part of the government scheme to try and get biodiversity into the countryside and uh, we're encouraging the farmers to provide all these different habitats for a variety of um, flora and fauna. The Trust was established in the 1930s to help reverse the rapid decline of the grey partridge. Increasing the diversity of habitats and predator control have helped, but reducing the use of chemicals has also been an important part of the plan. One of the other techniques that Malcolm and the Trust are pioneering are these raised grassland ridges, and they're called beetle banks, and they provide shelter for pest-eating beetles. Also as well, notice all this grass here is perfect for birds like partridges to breed in. Wonderful, they can tuck their nests right in there. And what's good for partridges, it's also good for another farmland speciality, the hare. And what I'm hoping for is a bit of this. A bit of hare's boxing. Now, if I was to get out and start chasing the hares, in two seconds flat, they'd see me and scarper over those hills. But I'm going to sit in the car, use it as a mobile hide, and let them come to me. Where are they? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hares I can see in one field. I've never seen so many in one vista. That's fantastic. Look at that. There's a great gang of them out here, but it doesn't look like they're in the mood for boxing, so I'm going to move on. It used to be thought that male hares boxed each other to get access to females for mating. It's now known that, in fact, it's the girl who strikes the first blows. The females aren't in season for long, so the males are always pestering them. When an over-amorous suitor goes too far, the female turns round and gives him what for. Oh, we've got some action. The female hare, or the Jill, is being chased by two or three males called Jacks. She's ready to mate, and they know it, and they're just chasing her through the field incessantly. This is a good time, basically, when hares are active like this, running around the fields, there's groups of them, that's when you're going to see the boxing. Oh, here we go. Oh, yes! That's brilliant! The female just turned round and cuffed one of the males and he rose up as well and did a little bit of boxing. Look at that! Skylarks singing, loads of partridges, bucket loads of hares. And though it does look bleak, and it's not everyone's picture postcard of a rural, lovely farm with those hedges and those little areas of woodland, if it's properly managed, the wildlife comes flocking back. 
Mike uh, Dildes here. You thought those uh, female hairs were full on. Tell us about the praying mantis. The praying mantis. Firstly, I'll Adrian, I'll say I'm much happier talking about natural history than I am about grey coloured hair, because look at that. <laughs> yeah. There ain't no, nothing going there. Okay. Praying mantis, look at this. Basically, while the male and female are copulating, the female will often end up eating the male while they're actually mating. Yeah. Starting with the head. Can they discuss this first? Does, does she say, no, no, I think she, you, I think I she brutally takes them from behind. Yes, yeah. Very vulgar. Okay. And what she does is she's eating, she's eating the male to provide lots of protein and nutrients. Uh -huh so that she can have really good, healthy eggs. Okay. Astonishing, really. Loads of examples of females bossing males in the animal world. Nothing wrong with that. Off very much. <laughs>